Hello viewers, welcome back to part seven of the Quantel DPB 7001 paint box restoration that's been going on since uh, the beginning of the year. So uh, quite a long time, but we're back on this now. In fact, yesterday I spent um, a good few hours with Electron Ash um, working on the SMD emulator, uh, which you uh, should have seen before in part six. So uh, what this board is going to be doing is uh, plugging into the back of the DPB um, and it's going to basically emulate the SMD hard disk and probably the, the floppy disk as well. Um, so we're in the process of plugging this in, um, getting started on actually creating some code to actually make things happen. Um, and that's what Ash and I were doing yesterday. Now, while I'm waving this PCB around with PCB way written on it, I just want to thank PCBWay for sponsoring this episode. They have tons and tons of options for make, making PCBs. You can tell that I use them myself because this was made by them. Um, they've got tons and tons of different options for manufacturing. So you've got CNC machining, you've got 3D printing, and there's a massive range of community-made projects all ready for you to go and check out. So if you want to have your own PCB made, go and check out PCBWay. So let's just refresh our uh, memories on what this uh, card is actually doing uh, in the DPB and why we need it. Uh, this uh, card here sits in the back of the, uh, the paint box and it's the interface to the SMD bus which runs out to the hard disk and the floppy disk. Um, you can have up to uh, eight drives on a Quantel paint box and they can be a mixture of floppy disks and hard disks of various different types. Um, they are all um, kind of roughly known as Winchester drives. It's an old name for um, big old hard disks. They um, use the SMD interface, um, which is, predates things like um, MFM, RLL drives, uh, and of course SCSI as well. So this goes way back into the 1970s. It's a much older format. The uh, discs work more like big floppy disks than they do hard disks. Obviously, uh, as hard disks as hard disks evolved, we had things like SCSI, um, and you just basically say to the drive, "Please give me um, a sector of 14,423," and then we'd send you 512 bytes back uh, from that sector. But that's not how SMD works. Um, it's very much more um, you step the drive to um, cylinder. 300, um, you select head 14, and then you uh, read the data that comes off the drive, at much like a, a very, very big expanded floppy disk. There is the SMD bus, and then there's a control line. So the, uh, the bus uh, runs around every single drive in, in a big long chain, uh, but each drive itself has a, uh, an interface cable, which actually does the things like um, stepping the heads and things like that. So each drive would have its own um, control cable uh, and the bus, data bus cable, would just run between them all. Where, where paint box is concerned, uh, we have uh, up to two of these cards. So one of these cards here will convert the TTL um, data that comes out of the disk control uh, cards in the paint box, converts them into um, differential ECL, uh, which is what SMD uses. Um, so it's quite a simple board, there's not a huge amount on it, it's literally just um, translating levels, TTL to ECL. Now one of these cards uh, will connect to um, one drive only, uh, so we have the data cable and the control cable. If you want to add on more drives, then there is another card that plugs in next to this one to expand out uh, to allow you to have up to three more drives um, running off this bus. So this um, data cable would then be spread between four drives. This would be drive zero, and then the other expansion card would be drives uh, one, two, and three. Now to get to the full complement of uh, drives in the paint box, you actually have two of these cards, and then another um, radial expansion card, which is what it's called. Um, and that gives you access to the, all of the zero to seven drives, uh, which the paint box can address. So what we're actually doing um, here is, at the moment, um, we want to retain SMD compatibility because we want to keep 
hopeful that we can read the hard disk that I got with this, um, which is a, a 14 inch, um, 330 megabyte uh, drive, uh, which could well have pictures on. Um, we don't know. We don't even know if it works, but we want to hold out hope that we can actually read that. So, so what we want to do uh, overall with this setup is have um, this card plugged in to give us SMD compatibility. We need that because uh, the floppy disk, which is SMD based, um, it's not natively SMD. Quantel made a, a Shugart 2 SMD interface card, which fits in the bottom of the floppy drive. Um, the paint box sends it um, SMD commands and that translates it into uh, the floppy disk commands. And having the SMD interface also allows us to potentially connect up to the hard disk that came with this system. Uh, because uh, nobody's ever read that disk and we would all like to see if there's anything on it, if, if it's actually working. So this will provide us with our SMD compatibility. So for the moment, this uh, emulator will plug into the second card slot of the um, interface card. So this will appear as drive four in the paint box. The reason why we're doing it like that is because we, as I said, we need to retain compatibility with SMD because what we're gonna have to do is set up everything on the hard disk, um, the emulated hard disk on here before we can actually um, eventually remove this completely and remove all SMD compatibility. And then this will plug in where this card goes and become drive zero and we've got a, an emulated hard disk. So the configuration at the moment is this card is plugged in the paint box and then this one plugs in just next to it. So the only thing that is actually on this PCB is the DE10 and these buffers. So the buffers um, allow, you, allow us to translate the five volt TTL to the 3.3 volt, which is on the DE10. So the way these are configured in the actual paint box is the, the data bus, which is all the data that actually gets written to the disc um, is present between these two cards uh, when they're plugged in side by side. So what this means is we can actually use the DE10 to monitor the traffic which is actually happening on this card. Um, and that's what Ash and I were doing yesterday. We spent a bit of time sort of plugging this in, checking, making sure all the signals and everything that we're seeing is what we expected. And the good news is it does seem to be. So Ash is gonna be going away and doing a bit more development. Um, eventually we'll get to the point where Eventually, uh, the DE10 will stop becoming a, a passive device and actually will then start um, pushing data back to the DPB and actually emulating a drive. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, take these, um, I'm gonna connect all this back up, plug it into the back of the machine, and I will switch over to my PC and I can show you the sort of things that we are able to capture at the moment. It's pretty basic stuff, but it shows you where we're at. Right, so I've got this set up. Um, the DPB is off at the moment, um, and I have um, all the cards plugged back into um, the rear of the machine. Uh, so what I've got here is I've got Quartus and Signal Tap open, and these are the uh, FPGA tools um, that Ash is using to uh, write the SMD emulator. I'm gonna power everything on, and um, effectively what we're using here is SMD emulator is behaving really just as a um, logic analyzer, uh, um, so we can track the uh, what the floppy disk is doing. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, just turn on the capture um, uh, on the DE10, which is actually powered up at the moment. Um, it has a separate power supply, um, so it allows us to plug in and communicate with it without the DPB being, being turned on. On here, you can see a large number of things that we're monitoring. Most of these are actually generated by the DE10 itself. Um, it's part of Asher's um, development of the um, floppy disk uh, side of the emulation. Um, so this is actually coming from the FPGA on the DE10 Nano. Uh, what we're actually gonna look at today is um, these traces down here. Um, these ones are the data that's coming from the DPB. So what we're gonna do is look at um, cylinder, um, cell, and head. Um, and these are the um, 
head and cylinder uh, positioning information that the DPB is sending to the floppy drive, which in this case is actually a GoTech. If you <laughs> you've got to keep up around here, um, it, it gets a bit complicated. But numbers here represent the um, the cylinder, um, the drive selection, I think, um, and the head. Now, because Quantel um, shoehorned the floppy drive as an SMD drive. Um, obviously, the heads um, go up to 16, uh, 1 to 16 or uh, 0 to 15. Um, because it's only a floppy drive, it's only got two heads, so it only flips between 0 and 1 as it's reading side 1 and side 2. So uh, let's get started. Uh, what I'm going to do now is just turn on the acquisition um, in signal tap. So we'll begin bringing data in from the DE10. Um, as I said, these numbers here are actually being generated by um, the SMD emulator thing part of it that's actually in the FPGA now. Um, we're not using that at all. Um, so when I turn on the paint box and it begins to boot up, um, you'll start to see these numbers change. So let me just turn on the paint box now and you'll see it starting to boot up. So there we can see it's picked up the serial number and it's reading track one um, and it's just flipping between um, the two heads. I'm not quite sure why it does this because it sits there quite a while just reading side one, side two, side one, side two. I'm not quite sure why that is a thing. Um, and eventually it'll it'll get going. So yeah, you can see it go through all the different tracks, and it it loads up and goes through, and uh, finds all the brush files on the disc. So uh, that says it's system ready to use. So if I flip back to the monitor. You can see there we have the painting. Now if I uh, bring up the palette, um, you can actually see it um, uh, start to load in um, other things to actually generate the palette. So if I select a larger brush, you can see it ends up on different tracks as it's loading the brush files in from the floppy disk. And if I go to the, the menus, it loading in um, the text brush which generates the menus and if I swipe back it will have to load in the the brush again so uh, that is about where we are uh, there's not much more we can do at the moment uh, there's um, uh, ash is gonna have to go away um, and uh, work on this a little bit more and eventually what we can do is the SMD emulator can first off it'll try and emulate a floppy disk effectively replacing the GoTech um, and then once that once we get our heads around that um, that should then just lead on to doing the actual hard disk which is just an expansion of the number of cylinders um, and the number of heads and the speed that the data is transferred so I think we'll call it quits there um, as I said um, there wasn't a huge amount to show you on this one um, it's basically the, the first step into getting the SMD emulator running. So hopefully on the next video, I'll have a little bit more to show you. And uh, we might even have uh, an emulated floppy disk. Okay, thanks for watching everybody. I hope you found this one interesting. If you want to help me out, then you can support me on Patreon. Um, if you feel so inclined, links to that will be in the video description. Thanks for watching everybody, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.